Hi everybody, Justin here again from chemistrynotes.com. This is our third video on section 11. Section 11 is kind of like chapter 11 and it is called solutions and their properties. So this is our third video and we have five videos total, but this is our third video. And today I want to talk about vapor pressure of solutions. Now vapor pressure is not a new term to us. We have seen it in section 10. In section 10, we talked about liquids, solids, and intermolecular forces, right? So in section 10, we talked about the vapor pressure of pure liquids. In other words, we talked about the vapor pressure of pure solvent, right? So it says here in our first bullet point, we've already seen the vapor pressure of a pure liquid, solvent only. And for the most part, in general chemistry, your solvent is water, if it's a polar solvent. And I'm going to go on a, out on a limb here and say it's hexane if it's a nonpolar solvent, usually. But don't hold me to that. Certainly water is the most common solvent. So, as an example, I've drawn water, and here's a sealed container or vessel, all right? And the pressure above that liquid is the vapor pressure. So vapor pressure is the pressure of a vapor above its liquid at some temperature T. Now the temperature, it is important to know what temperature you're at because as we learned in the last video, one of the three factors affecting solubility was temperature, right? And if we increase the temperature of a gas solution, the gas solute will be less soluble. So it's just important to know the temperature. All right, question. What happens when you add a non-volatile solute to a solvent such as water in the picture above? In that drawing above, those little circles, those, those circles I've drawn, those are just my way of drawing solvent molecules. Now I'm going to introduce a dark circle, which will be my solute. And a non-volatile solute, by the way, is just a solute that is going to stay home. It's going to stay in solution. It has no tendency to escape into the vapor phase. So we don't have to worry about that. The only thing escaping to the vapor phase is going to be the solvent molecules, which are essentially usually water molecules. All right. So on the next page, I'm going to introduce NaCl as my solute. And I'm going to represent my Na and my Cl with a little dark dots. So let me set that up. I'm going to draw two sealed containers now, or two sealed vessels. So if the vapor escapes, right, it's not going to escape up into the atmosphere. We have it contained in these sealed vessels. The first one on the left is just pure solvent water. Same drawing as you saw on the last page. The drawing you see on the right is the first time you've seen this. This is when I'm drawing a solution in a sealed container. So I've got my um, white circles. Those are my solvent molecules, of course. And then now I've got these new ones, these black dots. A black dot represents either an Na plus ion or Cl minus ion. That is a solution on the right, pure solvent on the left. You'll notice that the, uh, the box on the right, the sealed container on the right, there are less vapor molecules. There's less particles of vapor above the liquid. So introducing a solute is decreasing the vapor pressure. And we want to know why this is. First, let me read what it says over there on the right. Regarding our sealed container on the right-hand side, it says less H2O molecules in the vapor phase relative to the pure solvent situation on the left. Why is this? Well, we're going to answer that question in just a second. But first, we want to kind of summarize what we see, what our observation is from these two comparisons. It says, so the presence of a non-volatile solute lowers the vapor pressure of a solvent. Why is this? Well, I'm going to read along with what's written here. It says, because the dissolved non-volatile solute, which remember I represent with a little black dot, the dissolved non-volatile solute decreases the number of solvent molecules per unit volume. And if the number of solvent molecules per unit volume is decreased, we're also decreasing 
the tendency for those solvent molecules to escape from the surface of the liquid. All right. So I'm finish, finishing writing down what I just said out loud. Uh, number of solvent molecules per unit volume goes down. Therefore, their tendency to escape per unit volume goes down. All right, there's also kind of a, uh, not, not a main reason like I just described, but also another reason is that also occasionally solute molecules, or in, the, in this case, uh, my solute ions, Na plus or Cl minus, they'll sometimes block the surface by which solvent molecules uh, can escape. So occasionally solute molecules will block the surface, right, the surface of the solvent. And if that happens, there just there's not as much surface area as there used to be in the pure solvent in, in order to allow them to break through en route to the gas phase. All right. Now I want to talk about a law. In the last vi video, we talked about uh, Henry's law, right? The pressure effects of uh, dissolved gas solutes. This law, I always get the two names confused, but it's important to remember the difference. This is Raoul's law. Raoul's law shows that the addition of a non-volatile solute simply dilutes the solvent, all right? Less solvent per unit volume, like I just discussed. So Raoul's law is basically a mathematical summary of the last page and a half we just talked about. So vapor pressure of solution is equal to the mole fraction of the solvent times the vapor pressure of the pure solvent. All right. So solvent is essentially H2O. Okay. Our solvent is usually water. So vapor pressure of solution is equal to mole fraction of the solvent times the vapor pressure of pure solvent. All right. So I'm going to do two sample problems and hopefully just by doing some practice problems, we'll be able to make sense of this. All right. First example, calculate the vapor pressure. So we're going to calculate PVAP, right? And PVAP will be P solution. So calculate the vapor pressure at 25 degrees Celsius for a solution. And this solution has been made by dissolving 158.0 grams of sucrose. And they were nice enough to give us the molar mass of sucrose. In 643.5 centimeters cubed of water. So let me reread that at kind of a normal speed. Calculate the vapor pressure at 25 degrees Celsius for a solution that's made by dissolving 158 grams of sucrose in 643.5 centimeters cubed of water. And then they're going to give us some information. At 25 degrees Celsius, the vapor pressure of H2O, pure solvent, is 23.76 torrs, and its density is that number that they gave us. So we will use that density um, as we need to to go between grams, uh, mass, and volume, right? All right, so how are we going to approach this problem? What are we going to do? There's a lot of numbers in here. Um, it's not like the old days when you could just do dimensional analysis, start with what you're given, put it over one. We have to kind of figure out what we're going to do here. All right. Well, we're asked to find the vapor pressure of the solution, right? We are. So we're looking for P solution. And we know that P solution is equal to the mole fraction of water, the solvent, times the vapor pressure of pure solvent, water. And the vapor pressure of water was given to us. 23.76 torrs. Okay, so I'm recording that down, and then I have to find the mole fraction of water. If I find the mole fraction of water, I can just multiply it by 23.76 torrs, and I'll get my answer to the vapor pressure of solution, or P solution. All right, so how do I find moles of water? How do I find the total moles? And then how do I get the mole fraction? Well, moles of H2O, is 643.5 centimeters cubed of water times the density of water, 0.9971 grams per centimeters cubed. That gets me out of centimeters cubed into grams. H2O, I divide by the molar mass of 18.02. That gets me uh, 35.63 moles of H2O. So now I have my numerator, 
All right. Moles of sucrose. How do I find that? Well, the reason why I'm looking for moles of sucrose is because I'm going to add it to the moles of water to give me the total moles, to give me my denominator. 158 grams of sucrose divided by the molar mass gives me 0.4616 moles of sucrose. Total moles of everything in this solution is 36.09 moles. So the mole fractional water is 35.63 moles of water all over the total moles, which we just found to be 36.09 total moles. Mole fraction is 0.9873. Finally, I can use Raoul's law and get my answer. P solution equals 0.9873 times vapor pressure of pure solvent, 23.76 torr. Vapor pressure of this solution is equal to 23.46 torr. Use the same units as I was given for vapor pressure of water, torr. All right. All right. Let's finish off this video with one last sample problem, one last practice problem. So this practice problem says, find the vapor pressure of a solution. That is going to be P solution, right? Find the vapor pressure of a solution made by mixing 35.0 grams Na2SO4. And then they give us the molar mass of Na2SO4. You usually have to use it if they give it to you, not always. So find the vapor pressure of a solution made by mixing 35 grams of Na2SO4 with 175 grams of water at 25 Celsius. The vapor pressure of pure H2O is 23.76 torrs, 25 Celsius, same value as in the last problem. All right, well, we're looking for vapor pressure of solutions. So Raoul's law, we can at least write that down and see if it's gonna be useful to us. In this particular problem, it is vapor pressure of pure water, 23.76 torr. You see how I write it all down and I map it out? It helps me visualize where I'm going, what I need to do. So I've broken down mole fraction into what it is, which is numerator over denominator, moles of water divided by total moles. So that's what I have to work on first. Okay, this is just like the last problem, right? The moles of water, 175 grams of water, I convert that to moles in one step. Start with what I'm given, put it over one, go from grams to moles using the periodic table, right? Molar mass of water, 18.02. That's 9.72 moles of H2O. That's my numerator for mole fraction. Moles Na2SO4, same idea. It's 35.0 grams. I divide by its molar mass, 142 grams. And that puts me into moles. Now here's the kicker. Why didn't I just hit an equal sign? What's this three over one stuff? Well, Na2SO4, uh, anything with sodium in it is going to be completely soluble in water, right? All sodiums are soluble, all nitrates are soluble. So I have three ions for every one formula unit of Na2SO4. So my answer is 0.738 moles of ions, okay? That's very important. That's the first time we've seen this. I wanted to introduce it as part of a practice problem. So Na2SO4 is essentially three ions. It's two Na pluses and one sulfate. So the mole fraction is 9.72 moles divided by 9.72 moles plus 0.738 moles. All right, you do that, you get your answer and we go from there. So that's, that's how you do those two practice problems, okay? So now, to solve it, we just plug it in. We've got our mole fraction, done, okay? So the vapor pressure of the solution in our last example is 22.1 torrs, all right? So that's it for video number three. Um, all of the notes that I do are handwritten and uh, they're handwritten. I have all my general chemistry notes, all my organic chemistry notes at chemistrynotes.com. Go ahead and check that site out if you're interested in the way I do these notes. And stick around because the next video is going to be video number four on section 11, solutions and their properties. All right, see, see you soon.